Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So in three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, May 2nd, 2022. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast to Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Duckworth, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Ms. Molly Jones. Present. Mr. Rob McMillian. Present. Ms. Julie Hen. Present. Mr. Russ Kuhn. Here. Mr. John Offerman. Present. Are there any other board members present? Yes, this is board member Makita Scott. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Thank you, Ms. Duckworth. Please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Yes, ma'am. Pedro Augusto. Present. Christopher Hartlow. Present, and I also have uh, Melanie Webster, Ms. Melanie Webster with me as well. Ms. Margaret Ann Howie. Here. Dr. Jeffrey Holmes. Present. Ms. Maria Lowry. Present. Horns. Present. Mr. Pete Dixon. Present. Ms. Megan Shea. Present. Dr. Jess Grimm. Present. Ms. Jennifer Hernandez. Present. Amy Hessler. Present. Romero Platt. Present. Ms. Aaron Sullivan. Present. Ms. Amanda Lanson, and I apologize if I'm saying your name wrong. Present. Ms. Joanne English Calvert. Thank you. Are there any other BCPS staff members present that I did not call? All right, Ms. Joyce, I believe we can proceed. Thank you, Ms. Duckworth. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Mr. Hartlow, please state your name for the record and proceed with presenting the first contract. Good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Hartlow. Uh, the first contract on the agenda is ARA 21019 uh, Digital Library Resource Multidisciplinary Research research databases. This contract modification will provide for the continued access to ProQuest online database and digital content for all schools. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $140,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $470,000 with one awarded contractor approved by the board on Tuesday, October 23rd, 2018. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Uh, Ms. Hen, I believe you have a question. Yes, thank you, Ms. Jones. Good afternoon, Mr. Hartlow. Um, my question is, what are the terms and structure of our contract with um, ProQuest? Meaning, is it a flat rate? Do, are we on an annual subscription? Or is it a per subscriber licensing model? Could you describe that, please? It is an annual subscription. That is my understanding of, uh, of Ms. Webster here. Is, is that what she's She's letting me know. Thank you. And is our pricing based on um, active users or is do we pay a flat rate? Um, that is something we'd have to look up. The reason I ask is because um, I'm curious as to the rationale for the modification. Has there been a price increase or what is the need for the modification? Um, since this was originally um, authorized with the 330,000 spending authority. 
Yeah, my, my understanding is, is the, the annual cost has increased. That's what's driving this. Is that something um, we can confirm? Uh, definitely. That that's driving it. And yep. my, la my last question, and you may have answered this, is um, do we have usage statistics for how many um, active users we have currently? That's something I can check yeah. on. Mr. Hardlove, this is Ms. Shea. I actually have some of that data if it's okay for me to chime in. Sure. It's uh, yes, it's encouraged. Okay. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon, Ms. Hen. How are you? Hi, Ms. Shea. I'm well. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Sorry, I'm going to see if my camera is working. So um, for Culture Grams, which is the K-12 version of ProQuest, we had um, 336,221 total pages viewed and 1,178 total visitors. So far this year, the, this data is through March of this year, we had 305,804 pages viewed and 29,004 visitors. That was for the K-12 culture grams. For the discoverer, which is the middle school six to eight, we had 15,841 total searches, 40,154 total full text views. Both of those were for FY21. For FY22 through March, we had 32,134 total searches and 126,033 full text views. And then lastly, for high school, um, which is the 9 through 12, we had 43,617 total searches, 170,384 full text views for FY21. For FY22 through March, we had 50,738 total searches and 154,682 total full text views. And I know I gave a lot really fast, but we also did it in the curriculum committee, so you can always see that presentation as well. Thank you for those. Um, do you sure. have the secondary user counts of distinct numbers of students that accessed it at some so point? Be, yeah, so because we do a district license and we don't um, count by individual users that way for those, we just count by text views and searches. I don't believe we can get individual like unique users, especially because sometimes the content is accessed by a teacher and linked into the Schoology course. And so then any student assigned to that course might access the content, but it would only count as that one link. But Ms. Lanza can certainly correct me because she is our expert in library. Hi, Ms. Shea is correct. Um, since we're using the universal login, um, we're not able to identify, you know, individual um, counts of students that are coming in and accessing. So what we do receive are going to be the counts about the searches and then also the content that's viewed. So but we do we do track student um, traffic, so potentially it would be possible to look at the top level domain. And I'm not going to get into the weeds on this other than to state that in order to show impact, what I'm looking for are the number of students. This is touching <laughs> in a figurative sense to say how many students are using this tool. That's what I would like to know. So it's if if we have a student doing 50,000 hit, you know, searches, that's great. They obviously love it. Um, and I heard you say that 100, we had 178 visitors um, in the elementary level. So we, we're obviously able to track it there. I would like to see those secondary numbers because what what we need to show is the impact and to justify this investment. That's what I I want to see. So I would ask. Um, you all to investigate or explore ways that we can show that because while the number of hits are great, that doesn't tell me how many students are benefiting from this tool. So one thing I can offer, thank you for that, Ms. Hennon, and we certainly can take that back, but I, I want to offer two things. One is that many of these are directly connected to specific curricular um, expectations. So we have um, numbers in terms of the number of students that access those courses. So for example, I can show you where these tools are utilized within a performance based assessment and ELA course and then align that to the number of sixth, seventh or eighth graders or 10th ELA 10 if it's aligned in that course, as well as we have it in our AP uh, capstone and independent research courses. So I can certainly give you student counts enrollment in those courses where there every student enrolled in that course is accessing this content by virtue of being in the class. The challenge with um, what you're asking for in terms of unique visitors is we don't have individual accounts. We have one system account. And so I'm not sure other than 
quantifying for you the number of students enrolled in courses in which this content is embedded and the impact that way. And I don't know if that's exactly what you're getting at, but I can certainly do that. Um, but I don't believe we have a way to, um, if, if you and I were both accessing it in terms of the system, it's a district account. So I don't know if I would be able to flesh that out other than, like I said, I certainly can do number of students accessing it directly in the curriculum courses. But again, Ms. Lanza is the expert, so if there's another way that you can think of, I'm certainly open to it. And if this, I would turn this back to the vendor myself. I would say, I'm being asked by my board to justify my spending here. Give me this. I'm not asking for our folks to jump through hoops. I would put it back on them and say, I need to be able to show this. How can your product deliver this? So not to I, burden I, us with it, Sure. Right back I, on them. I, I appreciate that. What I would offer is I wonder if that would mean I would have to have individual accounts, which we have not done, but I can certainly ask the question. Sure. And I appreciate you not wanting us to jump through the hoops and I can certainly push on the vendor for that. I don't. I would ask them because I imagine they're hearing from their other customers too. We can't be the sure. only ones that want to track impact. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Joes. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Mr. Kuhn, do you have a question? Thank you. I'm I just want to focus on on the increase on the increase. Is it is it just for one year? Because it looks like we only have one year, one contract year left, and we're increasing one hundred and forty thousand dollars. So can someone explain that to me? That that is that is my understanding. Yes, it's one hundred and forty thousand dollars for the additional year. But are we are we extending the contract a year? Because it's not clear by what's presented here that we're extending the contract for a year. It just sounds like a price increase. So I'm trying to understand what it actually is. No, the contract, I'm sorry, this is Melanie Webster. The contract term is not changing. Um, this is simply a change in the spending authority of the contract. Each year since 2020, the cost has the cost went up in 2020, so we've been paying a higher rate, and we're now to the point where we need the spending authority for that final year of the contract. Okay, because I, I was trying to make sense of the numbers on this sheet that were provided, uh, and and it looks like we're anticipating $103,000. I guess we've been absorbing the increases over the year and exactly the entire yes. contract. And now you're asking for an increase to finish out the term. All right. That's Thank you. That makes sense. I was I was hoping they didn't double their price and needed an extra hundred thousand dollars to finish the year out. All right. Thank you. Any more questions, committee members? There being no further questions, uh, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Next contract is um, ARA-210-19. Um, actually, that's the one I just did. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, contract two is JBO-714-20, Math and Science Supplementary Supplies and Equipment. And this is simply an assignment of this contract um, to uh, from Lakeshore Equipment Company to Lakeshore Learning Materials. Um, uh, um, DBA, I'm sorry, DBA Lakeshore Learning Materials to Lakeshore Learning Materials LLC. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Are there any questions, committee members? Please state your name and question. There being no questions, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlow, please proceed. The next contract is JMI-612-18, Textbooks and Instructional Materials. Uh, this is an increase. Uh, the con this contract uh, modification will provide for the continued purchase of textbooks and instructional materials for the Department of Teaching and Learning. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $3 million, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $13 million, with 16 awarded vendors approved by the board on June 12, 2018. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Mr. Kuhn, do you have a question? No, I was just happy to see that we're going to buy some more books. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions, committee members? 
Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with Ms. the next Jones, I have a question. I put it in the chat. Oh, go ahead, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Um, I noticed that one of our um, vendors that this is recommended to is Greenwood Publishing doing business as Heinemann. Um, can you tell me if that's being used for the purchase of leveled literacy for Fontes and Pinnell? Um, so I'm going to go first. I don't know, Mr. Hartloff, if you want to look at the specific spending report, but there was a different contract that had originally had been brought forward specific for things like LLI. So any of those purchases, which we have not purchased um, with central funds, um, nor have any plans to, would not happen on this. I don't have, I, I don't want to misquote and say that some school didn't submit something, but it would not um, be with central funds. Typically that is used uh, for professional learning titles. So Heinemann also publishes a number of um, professional learning titles. So when individual schools or offices are offering uh, professional title titles for purchase, that's typically when we would use that vendor. OK, so this would be an additional in addition to curriculum materials. This would be schools yeah. ordering whatever a they like of under this. order for um, books for a lot of professional learning titles, um, sometimes classroom library titles, sometimes replacement novels. Um, and then also um, central office, so ELA, but also even Title I um, when they're providing materials for some of the summer programs. Um, it's all of the above, lots of books, as Mr. Kuhn said. Great, thank you. Sure. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next contract. LLY-427-22. Two extracurricular enrichment for English language learners. This is a new contract for uh, extracurricular enrichment for English language learners for the Division of Curriculum and Instruction. Approval is requested for five, for a five-year contract with two recommended providers and contract spending authority of two million dollars. Ms. Hen, do you have a question? Please proceed. I do. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Just a quick one. Um, I was curious to see if we considered um, partnering with Baltimore County Parks and Rec on any of these opportunities, just because they seem to offer a, a synergistic programs with their um, summer programs and possibly even at some centers, their after school programs. That if we provided the instructional resources, they offer the sports, the arts, um, quite an array of programming, and I know that they do quite an excellent job at at that and are specialists. So um, is that something that we did consider? Um, because I know that there are opportunities to, to collaborate um, with the county in certain areas, and this just seemed like one that we might have been able to take advantage of. So I'm going to answer from an instructional side, but Mr. Hartlove, I don't know about like if they would respond to a bid or anything of that nature. So in particular, so yes and. So we often work to see how we can tap into, especially in some of these communities. I know the Park and Rec community in Dundalk, for example, is very active and um, supports the school. This particular contract, we were looking for individuals that had training and expertise working with multilingual learners because we are serving an increasing population of immigrants as well as in some of our secondary schools, students who've experienced um, interrupted formal education. And so what's unique about these vendors that I don't believe, now there may be some individuals with Park and Rex, and we certainly can um, reach out, but these particular individuals, many of whom themselves were immigrants or refugees, and so they're able to bring that personal experience and provide that connection. Um, so Soccer Without Borders and then the other vendor, Hey Tutor, actually have um, experience working specifically with the um, kind of wraparound services that we look for when supporting our multilingual learners. So it is about some of the soccer and some of the enrichment, but it's also about those linguistic supports. It's about um, becoming familiar with um, just the new surroundings and the settlement and making those connections with some of that relationship building. So I don't believe Rec and Parks has a particular expertise in that area. So this particular contract might not have been that place, but I want to offer as an and, we're always looking to strengthen those partnerships where they already exist in these communities so that we can provide some of those linguistic supports so that our students that live in um, play in these communities can access those. So that's certainly a partnership we can continue to strengthen. Um, but I just wanted to clarify this particular one was specific to having those type of wraparound services and expertise with this population. 
Sure. And this need is only going to grow. grow so absolutely. it would it would be fantastic if yeah. we built that capacity in house and partner with um, Rec and Parks to be able to serve this community. Because, like I said, it, it's going to grow if we had it in house. Um, we could, you know, recruit the adults as volunteers, sure. bring them into these communities. And I just, you know, rather than being an exclusionary program, sure. Um, an inclusive approach to um, this is something that I think would benefit both um, the non-ESOL population as well as our ESOL learners. Well, and I think you raise a great point, and I have two members of my team here who I'm sure are taking notes about ways that we're always looking for ways to also strengthen the entire community. So connecting parents and helping our parents figure out how they can volunteer in some of our rec and parks and some of those linguistic supports. Perhaps we could even invite some of the rec and park folks to attend some of our trainings so that they become more versed. I think it's an excellent idea. It wasn't unique to this contract in what we were trying to provide for our summer programs, but I think it's excellent feedback. And to your point, I will share at curriculum committee, we were asked if we want more money for this contract. So we know that this need, which never happens. So we know that this need is growing and that we have to think about multiple ways. So thank you for that um, input. Sure, I would encourage you to work with them. They're even um, working on building facilities um, geared towards providing activities that are culturally um, responsive Great. to Love the it. needs of these communities. So a lot of synergies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, committee members. Any more questions related to this contract? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. OK, GDA-319-22 Career and te Technical Education Supplies and Equipment. This is a new contract for prototype engineering, manufacturing and construction equipment and supplies for the Office of Career and Technology Education. Approval is requested for a five year contract with two recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $550,000. Um, I would draw specific attention to the second bullet under description of the uh, the specific in, uh, equipment will include fused uh, deposition modeling, FDM, 3D printers, CNC machines, laser engraving systems, and 3D scanners. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. LKO-909-20. Uh, Masters of Science in Digital Transformation and Innovation. This is just a change uh, of the contract name from Masters of Business and Business and Technology Management to Masters of Science in Digital Transformation and, and Innovation. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next contract. ARA-209-20 Records Management Services. Uh, this contract modification will provide for the continued record, records management services for the Office of Law. Approval is requested to extend the contract for one year with one year awarded, uh, with one awarded vendor approved by the board on Tuesday, May 5th, 2020. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Committee members, any questions? Ms. Hen, you have your hand up. I do. Thank you, Ms. Joes. Um, I'm curious as to why this is just a one year contract and can't be extended for a longer term since records management has um, is by nature a, a longer term service and isn't going away. Um, would this be more suited towards a five year contract? And is that something we could realize um, a cost savings if we were to, ne to negotiate a longer term? with this vendor. iMerge, I believe it is. Or emerge, emerge, yes. emerge. Thank you, Ms. Howie. Surely. Uh, as I recall, this was to extend the original term of the contract. And the original term of the contract was three years. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is simply e exercising our ability to extend it for another year. OK, so the original contract, did that have one one year option to or multiple one year options? I believe it's one one year option, yes, ma'am. But I would defer to Ms. Webster. That is correct. Ms. Webster is shaking her head. Mm -hmm. Okay, so beyond this one year, we will need to enter into a new contract. And at that point, we may so opt to um, enter a five year if we 
so choose right. or renegotiate terms or place it out to bid, I would imagine. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Any thank you. Other? Thank you. That's all I had, Ms. Joes. Uh, any more questions, committee members? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. GDA-316-21 Court Reporting Services. This is a competitively bid contract for court reporting services for the Office of Law approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $300,000. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next contract. LLY-423-22 Public Sector and Education Administration Software Solutions with Related Services. This is a new cooperative contract for substitute employee management software for the Department of Human Resources, Recruiting and Staffing, Office of Temporary Services. Approval is requested for a two-year, eight-month term with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $275,000. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. I do have a question, but I'm going to put that out to the committee members. Do you have a question? Ms. Hen, please proceed with your question. Thank you. Um, so this is a new contract. Was it was the contract or the um, request for proposal specific to this product, the Smart Find Express software, or did we consider any other products? Ms. Hen, this is Melanie Webster. The solicitation was not was for a variety of different software products and solutions. And this is one of the solutions that was requested in the course of that solicitation. Thank you. And if we surveyed schools to gauge their satisfaction with this particular solution? Uh, we, I would need to ask HR to chime in to see if they have any feedback from schools. Melanie, we have not um, surveyed specifically schools um, with regard to feedback around this contract. We've been um, we've been using this product for a number of years now. Um, it is used um, for teachers to record their absences. Um, as well as administrators um, input and record their absences. And then the Office of Payroll utilizes the Smart Find Express to pull um, teacher time worked um, so that they can um, pay the subs and they will um, continue to, to use this as the unofficial record for teachers for their attendance. OK, thank you. So can you speak to the evaluation process then when the bids were considered in terms of were, were the products compared and were school staff involved in that process? This is a cooperative agreement, so our school staff were not directly involved in the solicitation. The solicitation was issued um, through Sourcewell and they had an evaluation team review the proposal. OK, so we we did not consider other products then. In terms we, of selecting a, a. A cooperative <laughs> contract. We did not know. OK, we had we elected then to continue with the product that has been in place. Yes, ma'am. OK, thank you. Thank you. Committee members, any more questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next contract. MWE-810-19 Chromebooks. This contract modification will provide for the continued purchase or release of Chromebooks and associated carts, delivery services and licenses for the Department of Information Technology. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $20 million, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to 48,158,000 with three awarded contractors approved by the board of, uh, by the board on Tuesday, June 11th, 2019. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Mr. Kuhn, you have a question? 
Thanks, Ms. Chose. Um, Mr. Hartlove, is there an extension? Or you, I don't understand why $20 million is being added. It doesn't, I, I, I don't understand if, if we're extending the contract, we're just increasing our spend by $20 million. Yeah, um, Chris, I'll take this. Mr. Kuhn, um, so what this request is for is to um, cover the additional 50,000 Chromebooks um, to um, outlay the high school students. So the 50,000, 34,000 will cover the existing student count and the remaining 16,000 is for um, anticipated growth and for repairs. So this is bringing in additional Chromebooks into the overall population at BCPS. So what are we replacing? Uh, this were, these would have been the laptops. We're moving to standard Chromebooks across um, all the different tiers. Right, there were Chromebooks in high schools. That's why I'm asking, what are we replacing? Mr. Kuhn, this is Jim Corns. We have not put Chromebooks in high schools yet. That is a FY 22-23 um, per this, this budget cycle. So we've only gone up through elementary and middle so far. Okay, my my bad. I, I could have sworn my daughter who has graduated already had a Chromebook previously, but I must be wrong. Um, and I have asked specifically to see the breakdown of what these leases are going to look like in a spreadsheet that had been provided previous years. I have yet to receive it. Um, as you know, we've already talked about increases in IT spending relatively recently. Um, and I thought we had talked about equipment, but I'm guessing it must not have been this specific lease that we're, we've talked about. Uh, but I would like to see that so that we can all follow exactly what's going on when things are going to end and need to be recompeted or replaced. Okay. Uh, Chris, is something I can work with your team? Sure, sure. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Mr. Alferman, you have a question? Uh, actually, I, I had a question very similar to, to the uh, to the uh, to, to the uh, to the one that was just answered. Thank you. Ms. Hen? Same for me. Mr. Kuhn asked my questions. Thank you. Mr. Kuhn asked everybody's questions. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next next contract. Sure. Okay, Jim, JMI 614-18 Technology Support Staffing Services. This contract modification will provide for the continued supply of technology support staffing services for the Department of Information Technology. Uh, approval is requested to extend the contract for one year and increase contract spending authority by $12 million, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $29,300,000, with 27 awarded contractors approved by the board on Tuesday, May 8, 2018. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Ms. Hen? Thank you. Um, I'd like to walk through these numbers here a minute and uh -huh. understand the 12 million that's being requested. And I understand that that corresponds to the one year extension. Could you um, speak to that, please? Sure, it's actually a combination. So there, there are two things in this request. There is the contract extension for our steady state number of field technicians, which uh, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it's 40 at this point. Um, so there is an extension because the period of performance ends the end of <clears throat> end of June this year. In addition to that, there is a request for additional field technicians that is to address um, ongoing support plus um, in order for us to be um, to improve our response times for um, for any field technician work, any um, site support. Uh, given that we're at the one-to-one -one initiative, we want to make sure it's it's important now that um, 
if students don't have a working Chromebook, that they're um, greatly impacted more so than what they would have been in the past. So that's it's an increase in staffing as well. OK, and the prior fiscal year actuals were 800,000 and this adds a year. So to make the jump to 12 million, I understand we're talking about adding additional positions, but there seems like there's something else that's yeah, missing. Yeah, yeah. And I what think, else are and we I think, including in that? Right. No, and I think the actual number um, for the last year was 5.9 million, or for for the number of technicians through this fiscal year. Okay. And it uh, also. So it, it, okay. Go ahead. Sorry. No, it also seems that the previous spending authority has been exceeded by, I believe, my if my calculations were correct, four and a half million. Does that sound right, Mr. Hartlove? Um, I'm seeing four point six million. Yeah, you're doing, the, the, you're doing the difference between the thirteen point one and the nine point six. Correct yeah. from the yeah. seventeen three. Um, I think, yeah. yeah, I think that's different. That's, um, that is, that was, that was what we, that wasn't, that's the lifetime contract expenditures, not what our um, spending authority was. Um, I think our previous spending authority was 17.3 million. I did the 17.3. The right. anticipated current year, fiscal year contract expenditures are 6 million. Right. The lifetime are 13. So if we say, let's say 19. On a previous spending authority of 17. So if yeah, I think the 19, I think the. Um, the 13 includes uh, some of the expenditures this year. Oh, we, uh, yes, OK, uh, yes. So that's so you're you're kind of. So we are under the current. Yes. There's no that, yeah, we're, we're definitely under. Yeah, Miss Hen, uh, that number of the anticipated expenditure is for um, uh, encumbrances that will run through uh, June 30. So at current, this contract is not overexpended. Okay, so that 13 includes this year, the lifetime then. Correct. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Do you have a question? Ms. Jones, I just had one more. I, I would like to see an itemized breakdown of the 12 million before the full board votes on this Wednesday. I, okay. I think we need more detail on this. If you if, can that be provided in an updated yep. exhibit for Wednesday. Thank you. Yes. yes. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Do you have a question? Oh, uh, that that will answer my question. Thank you. And and I I just put yeah. in the chat that Excellent. I have to leave, but thank you. you I, I will bring a motion to the floor before you leave. Um, any additional questions, committee members? Hearing none, um, since Mr. Kuhn has to leave, I'm going to bring a motion to the floor uh, for the committee to approve contracts 1 through 11. Do I have a motion to approve contracts 1 through 11? So moved. Offerman. You, Mr. Offerman, do I have a second? I'll second that, McMillian. McMillian. Um, any discussion? Mr. Jones, I'd like to separate some of these. Okay, could you put that in chat, what you would like to separate? Sure. Possibly just the last one, okay. which was 11, I believe. If you so want to um, take the vote on 1 through 10. All right. Do I have a motion to approve contracts 1 through 10? So moved, Offerman. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Uh, do I have a second? McMillian, I'll second it. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Duck, Ms. Duckworth, please take the roll call vote to approve contracts 1 through 11, uh, 1 through 10, sorry. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Hen? Yes. 
Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Ms. Joes? Yes. Or in favor? Thank you. Um, contracts 1 through 10 will move to the board for approval. Do I have a motion to to approve contract 11 to the full board? So moved Offerman. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Do I have a second? I'll second that McMillian. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Any discussion? Hearing none, may I have a roll call vote, Ms. Duckworth, to approve contracts, contract 11. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Hen? Abstain. Mr. Kuhn? I'll abstain. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Joes? Yes. It's three in favor. Thank you, Ms. Duckworth. Contract 11 will move to the board for consideration. Um, Mr. Hartlow, can you please proceed with presenting the next contract 12? Sure. Uh, LLY-413-22 bus routes 2. <clears throat> this is a new competitively bid contract for additional bus routes for the Office of Transportation. Approval is requested for a five year term with two recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $10 million. Thank you. Um, committee members, any questions? I do see a board member having a question, but I'll open it up to committee members first. And I do have a question as well. I have one, Ms. Joes. Go ahead, Ms. Hen. Um, so can you can we break down what expenditures are included in this spending authority? And I support this. I wish we could get more routes covered. Yes. So yeah, I believe I believe this is a good news. I, I did I see uh, Dr. Grimm online? Yes. Yes, so this this contract um, would be similar to the to the contract that we that we currently have in effect. Um, it would provide contracted services, uh, which means the contractors provide their buses and um, they they run the routes that that we prescribe for them. Fantastic. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, committee members, any more questions? Ms. Joes, I have a question for Mr. Dr. Graham. Go ahead, Mr. McMillian. Dr. Grimm, there's two vendors down the bottom. So am, am I interpreting this right that these are new vendors and this contract is going to go to them or is the contract going to be spread out among the current vendors, including these two vendors? Thank you. So the way the, the contract works, as, as you're all aware, um, the board graciously approved a new contract for us. Uh, at the end of last year to begin this school year because our, our then contract was running out of time. So before we could enter into this contract or seek approval for it, uh, we give the opportunity for all of our current contractors um, to determine, they, they basically get a right of first refusal if they can take on additional routes. So we went through that process with the Office of Purchasing <laughs> to see if any of our current contractors anticipated being able to take on additional routes or assume additional rounds. And we do that throughout the year, but we also did that prior to um, the, the solicitation being put out and, and put available. So this is two additional uh, contractors in addition to the contractors that we currently have. So these routes are going to have been made available to the, the current vendors and they've said no, and they're going to go to these two, or are they open to all vendors, including these two? That is correct. So the the uh, route, routes that we had that were open were, were available to the current contractors that we had. Um, a few were, were able to pledge that they would take on additional work. Others uh, are not able to take on additional work at this time. So these, these are uh, routes that will go to the new vendors or to the new contractors. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Ms. Scott, do you have a question? Sorry, I was on mute. Yes, I have a question. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to confirm it. I see where it says 
10 additional routes and then 10 summer school routes. So I think I was trying to see. Um, uh, and it says that it's for the east, central and west. So would that be um, three additional routes for each area? How would that be divided up? That's a great question. Um, no, ma'am. So it's actually up to 10 additional routes. It does not mean that these vendors will take on 10 additional routes. Um, that's just what we've projected and, and what we're trying to request as part of the spend authority. What happens when we put a, a solicitation of this nature on the street? The, uh, the contractors that uh, participate in the solicitation are given the opportunity to um, to basically offer a price based on um, either east, west, or uh, central locations, um, varying routes. That often depends on where those contractors are located, um, where their where their depots are, for example, um, and what they're comfortable and familiar with, or where they believe that they can get their drivers. So what they do is is they um, they say we are willing to do. X number of routes in the West, or we're willing to do Y number of routes in the East, or we're willing to do some in the Central and, and some in the East. So it really does depend on the response from the, the individual contractor as to how they, they bid for um, as part of their response. OK, so even though it says East, West and um, East, West and Central, we don't know yet really if it's east, west and central because it would depend on the contractor where they're able to provide coverage. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am, that is correct. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Miss Hen. Do you have a follow up question? I do and I'll be brief. Miss Scott touched on it. I was um, just curious as to the process by which the, the new vendors respond to their capacity and how they can um, service us and whether or not we could get additional routes from these two new vendors and and could we we lock that down? Um, do you need greater spending authority? I mean the board wants to provide you with whatever you need because certainly this is one of our priorities. So um, it's good. It's a good good news and do you need more would be my question here. And if they're offering it and have the capacity, we want to take full advantage of it. Yes, and th thank you for that question. Um, so th at this time, these are the, the contractors that responded positively to this request for proposal. Um, so they they basically these are the these are the routes that are these are the numbers that the that the contractors can commit to at this time. Um, I know that this uh, authority gives us up to ten. I believe that that these two contractors combined um, have bid somewhere along the lines of of six total routes that they're able to take on at this time. What we okay. found is that with some of our contractors as they come on board, um, as they become partners with us here in, in Baltimore County and they become more familiar with the business that we have, that they're able to grow and expand. So we're certainly looking forward and, and hoping that these new partners are, are able to do that with us. Terrific. Well, whatever we can do to put Baltimore County in an advantageous position to um, and work with them and be good partners with these contractors, we want to enable you to. So thank you. Thank you. Good news. Thank you. Um, hearing no more questions, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next contract. Thank you. GDA 315-22 disposable food trays. Um, and this is a simply uh, approval is requested to add three vendors, no cost, no additional cost. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next contract. LLY-409-22 commercial food products. This is a new competitively bid contract for commercial food products for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services. Approval is requested for a five year term with 17 recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $17.5 million. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. 
LLY-419-22 Preventive Maintenance and Repair of Refrigeration Equipment. This is a new competitively bid contract for preventative maintenance and repair repair of refrigeration equipment for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services. Approval is requested for a five year term with two recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $2 million. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. JNI-769-16 Furniture office, school, and library. And this is simply a consent to the assignment of this contract, similar to the uh, one earlier. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting the next contract. Good evening. Uh, my name is Pete Dixit. I'm Executive Director for Facilities Management and Strategic Planning. Next contract for your approval is GDA 322-21 for bottled water delivery. Uh, this has been shared with board uh, several times in the last 12 to 18 months. The first time we came to you was in June 8 uh, on 2021. Uh, then we came back to you on September 14 due to an assignment. And we wanted to come back in April. Uh, we piggyback on Prince George's County contract, so we didn't have all of the information on that contract. So that brings us to the May meeting. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. I have a quick question. Is this $1.2 million just for 11 months? That's right. And uh, our projections are 900 to $1 million for normal building occupancy. And uh, there has been some price increase or anticipated. And the trends that we had in the past, um, we don't have that uh, due to COVID. So we are being on the safe side and there may be little extra money there, but we don't know at this point. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is JBO 707-18 uh, for interior door replacement uh, and or repair and the modification amount is $75,000. So that will bring the contract value to $475,000 from $400,000. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. <clears throat> the next contract is JBO-708-18 for drain cleaning and associated material. The request here is to increase the amount by $50,000 to take it to $350,000 from $300,000. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is JBO 720-19 and this is to do concrete and asphalt work. The existing contract is for $900,000. We are requesting an addition of $3,600,000 because there are several additional schools that we would like to handle and complete repair works in parking lot uh, and paving access road and sidewalk rear entrances and we'd like to complete that work so we are asking for additional funding committee members any questions hearing i have, i have one miss joe's sorry ahead, i didn't type in the chat fast enough so um mr dixit hi good evening good evening you you partially answered my question which was um why the 3.6 millions needed because it looks like um there are only two years left on this contract, but can you tell us um, what portion of that is for new construction um, for schools and which schools 
this will be used for? So we don't have the master. The first answer is that this is not for new school. This is for existing schools. The second answer is that because of a lot of funding diverted to other needs, site work uh, has been impacted and it has kind of accumulated on us. So we are trying to do a lot of this site work, which which includes parking lot um, and uh, sidewalks. And, and that's what is going to be handled. We are still in the formative stage of listing, but some of the schools that I know is Randallstown High School, Berry Hall High School, Pot Spring Elementary School uh, parking lot, um, and Lock Raven High School parking lot, and on and on and on. Okay, so that makes sense. So it's existing school um, repairs and renovations. That, that's right. Primarily parking lots. And what's, um, for our own knowledge, what's the average cost of, a, say, a high school parking lot um, <laughs> resurfacing? So that depends on the size. Every mm -hmm. project has its own scope of work. So the larger uh, the ballpark, yeah. The, uh, so it's very difficult because sometimes you have to do the what our folks tell me the foundation of parking lot, the base sub base. Sometimes you don't have to do it. So each project has to be evaluated. Anything I'll give you will be will not be correct. Even on a square foot basis. I don't believe I have an accurate number that I can share with you. Fair enough. Thank you. OK. So the next contract is. Uh, KSH 309-19 inspection, maintenance, repair and uh, installation for bleachers and stadium seating. The request is to add $195,000. This is another one of those items that is backlogged on us. There's a lot of work that has to be done and uh, we are planning to take care of some of that work. Committee members, any questions? Mr. McMillian? No, thank you. All right, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is LKO 402-20. This is for grounds maintenance equipment, and I believe this is just consent to the assignment for this contract from Finch Services Inc. to Atlantic Tractor LLC as the result of an acquisition from security equipment company to Gathersburg Farmer Supply Inc. Incorporated EBA Repair Equipment Company as the result of an acquisition. So there is no new money requested. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is ASI-801-22, and this is uh, a professional services, uh, which really is construction testing services. Uh, we are piggybacking this on a Car Carroll County uh, contract. Uh, a lot of new construction. If you remember, uh, one of the contract is for testing services, but other than uh, new construction of school. There are other projects that require testing, and this will cover those jobs. Thank you, Ms. Hen. You have a question? I did. Um, I'm just curious to see what contract this replaces. We don't have that information on the exhibit, or does this supplement an existing contract for so testing? This is a new contract. We did not have this before. Uh, we used to um, uh, get testing services on, on a smaller scale, and we used to have testing services for new schools, but we realized that testing services will help us in a lot of projects that are not new schools. So this will be done based on um, the, the project, individual project that are not new construction project. OK, thank you. Thank you. Any more questions, committee members? 
Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. So the next contract is CWA-121-22. This is uh, a sole source contract to BGE uh, for distribution services of uh, electricity and natural gas. Uh, uh, just for the benefit of board members, uh, the utility prices have generally two components. One is the commodity, uh, other is the distribution. So electricity and natural gas are distributed uh, by the infrastructure provided by the BGE, and and they have a set rate approved by the uh, Public Service Commission, and we pay that rate to them, and we buy commodity on a separate contract. So this contract is only for the distribution services. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. OK, the next contract is JBO 711-22. It is for water treatment service for critical equipment. Um, these, this is part of our preventive management program to extend the life of boilers, and chillers, and other high pressure equipment. Uh, by treating the water that goes into that equipment, uh, which improves the performance and extends the life of that equipment. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. So the next contract is really a, um, a deed of easement and agree with, agreement with Baltimore County. It is ARA-204-22 uh, Honeygo Elementary School. Uh, during the design of that school, the county required that we provide an easement upon request to allow for the extension of the sewer line to the north towards Chapel Road for future development. We recently received a request for that, and that requires uh, a deed of easement and agreement. Our law office has reviewed it, and uh, Baltimore County's law office has reviewed it. It requires board approval, and we are requesting your approval. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, thank you, Mr. Dixit. I think that concludes all the contracts that I have, so thank you very much for approving them, and have a nice evening. We haven't approved it yet, Mr. Dixit. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 12 through 26 be moved to the full board for approval. So moved, Offerman. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Is there a second? I will second it, Ms. Jones. Ms. Duckworth, um, so we are moving contracts 12 through 26 for approval to the board for action. Those in favor, please say yes. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Duckworth, please call the roll. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Ringmillian? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. It's four in favor, Ms. Jones. Thank you, Ms. Duckworth. There being four in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts one through 26 will be moved to the full board for action. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next building and contracts committee meeting will be held on Monday, May, June 13th, 2022 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night.